Greetings from the Place Church, and we encourage you. Uh, today is the first Sunday, so I encourage each and every one of you to have some juice and, and bread and be prepared to celebrate the celebrants of the Holy Eucharist of what we call communion on today. At the end of the service, we will give you and your family a chance to come together, and I will read to you, and you will break off a piece of the bread and eat it and then Give them also uh, some juice to drink in remembrance of God's love for us. So please, ma'am, please, sir, bring your family together. Call them over and let's commune together in Jesus' name. I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall be in my mouth. Oh, magnify the Lord with me and let us praise his name together. Good morning and welcome to our online service. We are so glad that you are joining us. The Lord is here and he have a word for each of us. Clear your mind and focus on all the many blessings God has provided for each of us. Oh, taste and see that the Lord is is good. Again, welcome and hear the mighty word of God. Sir 
search for all eternity long and find there is Search for all eternity long and find that there is none. There is none. There is none. Yet you are robbing me, but you say, how are you robbing me? In tithes and offering, you are robbing me. Yes, it is time for offering, and this is a time when each and every one of us can participate. And right now, there are several ways that you can give. You can text to give. You text to 84321. Enter the amount in dollar format. No dollar signs are needed. Follow the prompts to complete. Confirm your amount. Or online at www.theplaceumc.org or by mail, The Place Church, Post Office Box 217276. Charlotte, North Carolina, 28221. Thank you, and remember, God is able. Lord, we thank you for the gifts we're about to receive, and we ask that it will be used for your kingdom. In Jesus' name, amen. Come on, everybody. We're going to take it back to the old church for a little bit. Can we do that? Oh, I
We greet you in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. In this time of pandemic, many of us feel like we are in sinking sand. You know, life sometimes could be much like quicksand. It looks normal. It looks natural. It looks solid. But then you step in it and you realize that it gives way. So today I want to talk with you. I'm Pastor Rivens from The Place, and I want to talk about and raise the question, are you really on a solid foundation? So I'd like to use for a subject on solid ground because of Christ. Romans 3, verses 19 through 28 in the NIV reads like this. Now we know that whatever the law says, it says to those who are under the law, so that every mouth may be silenced, and the whole world held accountable to God. Therefore, no one will be declared righteous in God's sight by the works of the law. Rather, through the law, we become conscious of our sin. But now, apart from the law, the righteousness of God has been made known, to which the law and the prophets testify. The righteousness is given through faith in Jesus Christ to all who believe. There is no difference between Jew and Gentile. For all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. And all are justified freely by his grace through the redemption that came by Christ Jesus. God presented Christ as a sacrifice of atonement through the shedding of his blood to be received by faith. He did this to demonstrate his righteousness because in his forbearance, he had left the sins committed beforehand unpunished. He did it to demonstrate his righteousness at the present time so as to be just and the one who justifies those who have faith in Jesus. Where then is boasting? It is excluded because of what the law, the law that requires work, no, because of the law that requires faith. For we maintain that a person is justified by faith apart from the works of the law. So again, I ask the question, are you in quicksand or on a solid ground because of Jesus the Christ? The Apostle Paul was an exemplary Pharisee, a scholar of the law and the scriptures, and zealous protector of the Jewish faith. If anyone would have asked Paul how are things before his conversion, he would have answered that they were just fine. Paul, the Pharisee, knew where he stood and what he was about. Some 1,500 years after Paul we have a German reformer named Martin Luther. He too was a scholar of the Holy Scripture and a devout man of God. But especially as a young theologian, he struggled in his understanding of God. God seemed distant and judgmental and left Luther feeling as if he stood on very shaky ground never measuring up to all that God required him to be. Can I get a witness? Are you on solid ground or sinking sand? If Paul and Paul, we have confident, a zealous person of faith. In Luther, we have someone less confident, more troubled by the weight of his imperfections and sin. 
both would come to find comfort uh, in the same good news. Both would find freedom and hope in the righteousness of God through faith in Jesus Christ. Can I ask a question? Why? Because this good news put them in a place on new ground, a firm ground of the grace of God. No shifting sand. Paul and Luther lived hundreds of years ago. Can we truly relate to them? Hasn't a great deal of change happened since then? Well, and I would say, of course, a great deal of change due to great advances in, in all areas of life and learning. <laughs> really, have it, we still, we still speak of them and, and us. We still use a similar term of Jews and Gentiles, blacks and Hispanic, or European Americans. So have we really changed? But we, human beings, still are concerned about our place in this world. Some of us still ponder the God who made us and wonder what God wants from us, for us. Am I the only one to feel that way or can I get a witness? Some of us are sure that our hope is built on nothing less than Jesus' blood and his righteousness. Others of us don't wonder at all. We feel we are quite well established and secure in the world. Our finances are secure. We can control our environment, so we think and control you, but dare not trust my Lord with everything. Hmm. We are on track to have certain and fixed goals ahead of us. Today we may feel most like the confident, secure Saul Paul standing on solid ground in his own learning and commitments. Then we are like Martin Luther, most anxious, and somewhere in between. Can I get a witness? Can I, am I the only one that see people and they're not sure what they believe in or what they stand for, and so they are shifting? Wherever we find ourselves, there is a word for us in Paul's letter to the people in Romans. God's gift of Jesus Christ puts us on a new, solid ground. The apostle Paul understood, well, what it is to be so absolutely confident and certain in one's commitment and purpose. Are you that certain that what you're doing is right without the instruction and the direction of God? And even if you are in the church, are you so certain that you are hearing God or hearing the theology of the church? And then the rug is pulled out right from under Paul and sometimes us. He went from zealous Saul to a blinded Paul in just a few moments. God has a way of getting our attention. So are you so sure that you know what you know? And if you don't know him, I guarantee you, you can't be sure. Paul's world turned upside down when Jesus Christ found him on the road to Damascus and brought him to faith. Brought him to confidence in Christ rather than in himself. When you are hopeless, Jesus is hope. It's a common human experience having the rug pull out from under you. 
It could be illness, a terminal diagnostic, to lose your job, a forced retirement, a breakup of marriage, <laughs> the pandemic, or a financial crisis can quickly destroy our confidence and our self-sufficiency. Your solid foundation of the world turns quickly into quicksand. A friend of mine has spent many years as a developer working in a highly stressed business deals. He was putting in impossible hours, jumping through hoops after hoops, only to finally be told he was terminally ill to the point of death. You can say he lived a good life. He broke what he called small rules, the written and the unwritten ones. He felt safe because they were never proven. He thought he got away, and so he never repented, never had remorse, and he didn't care who he hurt. Can I get a witness? Have any of you seen things like that or been a victim by someone like that? But most of us know what the world says, but others are not following. Why should I? Paul's words in verses 19 and 20 help captures what it is to find out that you can follow all the rules, but it isn't enough. No one, no one is justified by deeds prescribed by the law. You can't work your way into heaven. My brothers and sisters, if I, you don't hear anything else I say, you can try your best, but until you are in the right relationship with God, you can work all day long, but you will never have a, a perfected spirit until you surrender. Uh, my brothers and sisters, I want you to know, like Paul, had to discover some new ground on which to stand. Paul's words in verse 24 are at the heart of finding new ground. They are now justified by his grace as a gift through the redemption that is in Christ Jesus. Paul found new ground on which to stand and once more confidently took up a mission. But this time, huh? This time, the mission was based on the grace of God the Father and not on his own abilities. Perhaps though you never had the confidence of Saul or Paul, uh, instead maybe you have lived with the feeling and experience of often feeling like you are being shaken on shaky ground. Uh, you know only too well that you are not in control of very much in your life or this world. <laughs> there have been plenty of disappointments. Uh, sometimes you feel like you don't have anything but hard knocks and failures. Uh, Paul's letter to the Romans point to the solid ground that is ours through Christ. Jesus. Paul proclaims that God has, has passed over. Uh, 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 let, me, let me make sure we get this right in today's vernacular. Forgiven. Your stuff has been removed. Uh, 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 maybe you would say you got a hookup, but nonetheless your sin, all of the things that you've done, your previous sin that you committed, Verse 25 is teaching you that God is righteous and in the face of our struggles and failures, his grace is sufficient. My friend, uh, my friend, my friend, my friend, you know, he, 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 he felt like he had accomplished everything in the flesh and he didn't repent. He rejected believing in God and in Jesus Christ. But the righteousness of God is God's faithfulness to us in spite of our failures and our sins. A person asked me, 
person asked me, well, Reb, if, if he would have repented, do you think God would have forgiven him? I, I said, well, I can't answer that, but he always says his grace is sufficient. It is God's faithfulness to us that put us on a new solid ground. Everything else is temporary. See, we know all too well our weaknesses and our failures, and if you don't know what your weaknesses and failures are, look in the mirror and be honest. But God doesn't Come demanding perfection. He giving us just one more chance when you stumble, when you mess up. David was a man after God's own heart, and we know he had a whole batch of sin, but he had enough sense to acknowledge and repent. No, God comes in Christ and does something about our weak and sinful conditions. God gives us Christ crucified and risen. He, he, he who pulls us out of the muck and calls us to cling to him. He's trying to help you understand, my friends, my brothers and sisters, I want you to know that there is enough grace and mercy for all if we just acknowledge, repent, surrender to him in faith. Now, now I say these things to some people and they just think they can say, well, you know, like you hurt somebody and you do something, you say, I'm sorry, but you know you planning on doing it again. But God wants you to acknowledge that you learned a lesson from this and now you're going to turn and try to walk the straight and narrow because on our passage, uh, 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 close, close in verse 28, with the good news that by grace, by grace of God, we stand on a new ground, God's ground, that holds us forever. Hmm. By grace, by grace, by grace. It is the good news that enables Paul to channel his energy and commitment to proclaiming Christ as Lord. Uh, it is this good news that enables Martin Luther to find confidence and courage to proclaim the grace of God in the face of opposition and threats. It is good news that allowed me to change from what I was to what God wanted me to be. That same good news is waiting for others to come, change, and surrender to Jesus the Christ. Uh, here is an illustration that might help us picture our situation. Uh, we, are, we are all like people who are found ourselves in quicksand. Quicksand undisturbs looks safe enough. But when a person began to, to walk out in it, you know, it, it, it looks like everything else, you know, leaves have fallen all on it, and you, you began to walk out in it because it looks safe enough. But when the person step off into it, then all of a sudden they began to sink. It, it, this is what looks solid. It, it, it creates a liquefied soil that cannot support the weight that's standing on it. But it looked like it was all right. Uh, the, the, the person begins to sink, but but can actually manage to keep the head above the water and stay afloat for a period of time. But it but staying afloat. Ah, my brothers and sisters, you can creep all you want to, and, and, and God will give you some time to change your mind, but there comes a point that you're going to sink, so staying afloat is only worse for so long, because when you are trapped in quicksand, a person is in danger of, of, of other threats, such as the sunlight draining them, and they dehydrate, or predators coming and, and begin to feed on them. Uh, 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 you know, uh, 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 hypothermia begins to happen and, and then you, you begin to slow down or, 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 or the tide begins to change and then it begins to come a little bit higher. But when the quicksand of sin traps us, uh, uh, we, we, we can stay slow for a little while. Uh, oh, 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 you, can, you can call on, 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 on your party. You can call on your brothers and, and your cousins. But I'm here to tell somebody today until you build a foundation on Jesus the Christ, this quicksand that traps you will only hold you up for a little while, but the word of God will hold you forever. So we all need a holy helping hand, a hand that is 
true. A hand that is solid. A hand that won't dematerialize. God is faithful to us in our weaknesses and, 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 and in our knees. God gave us a hand. Jesus crucified and risen to pull us. Tell somebody say, he can pull you out of your quick quicksand. He can pull you out of your muck and mari clay. He's able to rescue you to a solid ground, a gift. And with the Apostle Paul and with Martin Luther and with all the reformers, we cling to this great gift. Not because we worked our way in, but because grace and mercy and because we reclaim it to the world. Hope is built on nothing less. So if I could just talk to somebody whose hope is, 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 is gone, he, he, he has cause to be born again and live in hope. First Peter 1 and 3. We live in a world where many foundations are crumbling. Can you stay right there for a little bit? We live in a world where many foundations are crumbling. Everybody's telling us to get out and vote because we feel we need to make some changes. Many institutions are failing because we are in a situation where many foundations are crumbling. We begin to look at what's going on in the courthouse. We begin to look what's going on with our police officers. We begin to look what's going on in our churches. We begin to look what's going on in our home. Many foundations are crumbling, but the Word of God teaches us that in the last days there will be a great falling away. So we live in a world where many foundations are crembling. And so, so, so can I move on and, and talk to you a little bit? People that we admire and respect they are being exposed as predators and frauds. The West Coast is burning up. Louisiana has storm after storm. And the rest of the world is consumed with this thing called a pandemic. And in our, our lives, trouble abounds. But hope is based on the expectation that things can get better. And let me tell you something. Dr. Fossey will tell you one thing, and the president will tell you another. But in our world, it seems like things keep getting worse. Things keep sinking deeper. But everybody needs to think about this. Even for Christians, it's so easy to fall into despair and begin to doubt and lose all hope. But you need to tell somebody, my hope, oh, my help, my hope and my help is built on nothing less than Jesus' blood and righteousness. I dare not trust the sweetest frame, but I'm going to lean on him. I'm going to lean on Jesus' name on Christ, the solid rock I stand. All of the ground is sinking sand. Oh, oh, oh. See, I want you to know that the stuff to your left, that's just the world. It's going to dematerialize. The stuff to your right, but if you call on him and face him, because all of the ground is sinking sand, when darkness veils his lovely face. I'm going to rest on his unchanging grace. In every high and stormy gale, my anchor holds within the veil. His oath, his covenant, his blood supports me in the overwhelming flood. When all around my soul gives way, he 
Amen. It's all my hope and stay because on Christ, oh, I can't do it for the president. I can't do it for the Senate. I can't do it for the people on my job. I can't do it for my company. I can't even do it for the United Methodist Church because on Christ, that's the solid rock that I'm going to stand on because I know everything else is temporary. I know everything else will shift, but the word of God is solid and it's going to hold me. It's going to keep me. When he shall come with his trumpet sound, oh may I then in him be found. You notice I'm quoting the words of a song. Because in him, my righteousness alone. Oh, let me, let, me, let me unpack this. Not because I'm so perfect, but because he washed me in his blood. Not because I walk the straight and narrow all the time, but he know that my heart is always walking the straight and narrow. And then the faultless to stand before the throne because he has said, forget it. Dump it. He's mine. Apostle Paul and Martin Luther would say, on Christ. That's the only thing that's solid. On Christ. It's where I'm going to stand in the midst of anything. On Christ. Because I realize that everything else gives way. My brothers and sisters, what are you standing with? What are you standing for? Stand with me on the best and most solid foundation. Somebody say Jesus. Stand with me on a foundation built with love and compassion, not lies and deception. Stand with me on a foundation that will hold you when you are not able to hold yourself because he cares that much. Stand with me. And I'm going to stand with Jesus. And when we stand with Jesus together, I just want you to know that you can stand with your head up high. You can stand as humble because you realize his love is what kept you, not because your works. When you stand with him, other people may see the old you, but if you stand with him long enough, they begin to see that, wait a minute, there's something else new about it. And they'll realize that you have a newness because you began to stand with Christ and he's able to hold us. He loves us and he can give us a peace that nothing else in this world can ever touch. My brothers and sisters, will you come and stand with us in Christ Jesus? If you're at home, I want to encourage you to reach out and, and get your elements ready. We will have communion today. But right now, I want you to come together, grab the children, the grandchildren, anyone in the house, the grandmother, the great-grandmother, and y'all hold hands, touching and said, together, as one, we can do anything. Divided, we have already been conquered. So will you stand with me on the solid foundation of Christ? Will you come? I invite you to come and pray with me on this morning. Father God, I pray for this nation. We are approaching election in just a few days on Tuesday. We will have the election, but Lord God, allow your spirit to cover this nation. You have blessed this nation. You have gifted this nation. Now allow us to be like the people of Nineveh and declare fast and repent. Allow us not to be like Sodom and Gomorrah, but allow us to humbly come and say, I know that I'm wretched but I want to be made whole. 
somebody in your home today, they may want to say, I know that I've done some things to violate family. I know I've done some things to violate self. But right now, God, will you help me? Make me new so I can stand on your foundation. Holy Father, I come to you now because I, I have some things that's bothering me. Call or reach out to someone that will pray with me because I need a touch from you. And I don't know where else to found that. But I'm going to say to you on Christ, the solid rock I stand, everything else is sinking sand. So get out of the quicksand and come to the kingdom. In Christ Jesus' name, amen. Christ our Lord invites to this table all who love him and who earnestly repent of their sin and seek to live in peace with one another. Therefore, let us confess our sin before God and one another. Read with me. Merciful God, we confess that we have not loved you with our whole heart. We have failed to be an obedient church. We have not done your will. We have broken your law. We have rebelled against your love. We have not loved our neighbors. And we have not heard the cry of the needy. Forgive us, we pray. Free us for joyful obedience. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Hear the good news. Christ died for us while we were yet sinners. That proves God's love toward us. In the name of Jesus Christ, you are forgiven. In the name of Jesus Christ, you are forgiven. Glory to God. Amen. At this time, we'd like to offer one another a chance to pass the peace offering one another signs of reconciliation and love. If there's someone in your home or someone that you just, just popped up in your mind, ask them to forgive you, whether they're in your presence or not. You can call them later, uh, or you can just pray and ask God to help you to do what you need to do, uh, and then ask them to forgive you. And then you need to let it go. I, I encourage people all the time to let things go. We hold on to things, and it causes us to stress and to be sick in our body. But God is encouraging us that he will forgive us if we will forgive others. So let it go and love God. As forgiven and reconciled people, let us offer ourselves and our gifts to God. The Lord be with you and also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. It is right and a good and joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. And so, with your people on earth and all the company of heaven, we praise your name and join the unending hymn. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Holy are you and blessed is your son, Jesus Christ. By the baptism of his suffering, death, and resurrection, you gave birth to your church, delivered us from slavery to sin and death, and made with us a new covenant by water and the Spirit. On the night in which he gave thanks he gave himself up for us. He took bread, gave thanks to you, broke the bread, gave it to his disciples, and said, Take Eat, this is my body of the, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. When the supper was over, he took the cup, gave thanks to you, gave it to his disciples, and said, Drink from this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, poured out for you and many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. And so, in remembrance of these, your mighty acts in Jesus Christ, we offer ourselves in praise and thanksgiving as a holy and living sacrifice. 
in union with Christ's offering for us as we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died, Christ has risen, Christ will come again. Pour out your Holy Spirit on us gathered here and on these gifts of bread and wine. Make them be for us the body and the blood of Christ, that we may be for the world the body of Christ, redeemed by his blood. By your Spirit, make us one with Christ and one with each other, and one in ministry to all the world until Christ come in final victory, and we feast at this heavenly banquet. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit in your holy church, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. During the pandemic, I've been praying, not the Lord's Prayer, but I've been praying for our children, for our country. So we all, you bow your heads as we pr continue to pray. Merciful God, we are in a time but you said all things work together for the good. You have revealed to us that anything that happens, you either do it or allow it to happen. So Lord God, help us to learn, to repent. Like the people of Nineveh, they realized they was almost in destruction and they had a fast and they repented and they changed for a period of time. Lord God, allow us during these several months Allow the church to change. Allow the believers to grow closer. Allow the world to change so that you can heal this land, so you can come. When man can't figure out an answer to this pandemic, you can just give us a breeze and a season, and you can stop it right now. So, holy God, I come to you, not expecting man to do anything but allowing you to do all things in our life. Bless us, heal us, and then allow us to worship you because you're worthy. Worship you because you keep us when we are unworthy. Worship you because you're the God of grace and mercy. So we come to you now in Jesus' name. Amen. The body of Christ broken for you. the blood of Christ that was shed for you. I invite you at home. I invite you everywhere where you hear this. Have your, your bread and juice. In the Methodist church, we use juice, but you may want to have uh, a wine because that's what they did in the days. But the United Methodist Church refrained from any strong drink in their worship, so we use juice. But we invite you to come. And with me, will you join with communion? Take, eat, feed on him in our heart with faith and thanksgiving, knowing that we feed on him for strength, we feed on him for love, and we feed on him so he may keep us whole. The blood of Christ that was shed for you. When the original disciples had their communion, they used a common cup and, and they, they served and fed on it together. So in your home, you may choose to do that or you may have individual cups. But take, drink. Feed on him in the heart with faith and thanksgiving. Knowing that I'm not so perfect that I can demand anything from God, but because of his unconditional love because of his abounding grace. He keeps us, he holds us, and he allows us to be his. We are now part of his family and his foundation. So Lord God, we thank you for redeeming us in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Go now in peace. And may the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, keep you and may the love of God rebirth you. And may the power of God allow you to be a beacon of hope in a dark land. Go in peace. Amen. God bless.